tools and could we ever help this boy see that if somebody could keep an eye on him? Oh, they must be here because he's been like that for so long. But we're gonna fill the time. All creatures do. Okay, I get it. What? Is there maybe a way to like flip through for sure? Okay.
Greetings, my friends, <clears throat> and welcome to our celebration here today. It is an honor for me um, to, to give a eulogy today as we begin, um, and I'm going to attempt to do what Father Harry either was not capable of or did not have the ability to do, which is to keep it brief. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Joe Zank. I am the pastoral leader here at Holy Rosary Parish and have been so uh, now. This is my 13th year as pastoral leader. And in that time, I got to know Father Harry very well and work very closely as, uh, uh, alongside of him. And I considered him not only a mentor, but also a good friend. And I am grateful. One of the first images that comes to my mind when I think of Father Harry and those of you who are at Holy Rosary will understand this very well, is when I would go upstairs in the living room of the rectory, I would see him sitting in the same spot on the same couch with the same cigar, a Dutch boy cigar, in his fingers, watching the same baseball game that he'd watched, you know, forever. And I don't know, first of all, why he ever bought a full couch in the first place, because he never used three quarters of it. He only used, and again, people walking up to, to Holy Rosary Rectory, you saw this, he was always on the right-hand side, and I don't know how that cushion didn't have like his buttocks prints just right there. That poor cushion, you know, took all the brunt. And, uh, and it's just, that's what he loved. He was at home there. And uh, it was interesting this last Friday, you know, he passed away Friday morning that I was up there working. I had, when, I, when I need some quiet time, I'd go up into the living room. And I was working there, and Sue had to come up and, and say something to me. And she said the minute she walked in the door, she smelled cigar. <laughs> and she came to talk to me, and I was seated in the exact spot that he always sits. And so it's like he was here with us. Um, Father Harry had a marvelous sense of humor. For those who knew him, you didn't enter into a conversation with Father Harry uh, unless you were armed for battle because he was going to joust with you and if you didn't have anything, he was going to leave you wrecked on the side of the road. He loved to just have retorts and volley and, and he was so clever and so quick and what was so beautiful about him as well is he had that great grin, that beautiful smile. When he knew he got you, he had that, that just look about him, and, and it was just so beautiful. Uh, I appreciated that part of him. One of the things he loved most of all, and, and Larry, I'm looking at you, the two weeks he would spend with you, your friendship, and the two weeks he would spend with you in Mexico every January. Because we got to hear about it the rest of the year. We heard about it six months prior, you know, oh, cerveza, margarita, yeah, si. You know, and then you'd go down there, and then we'd hear about it six months after, you know, what you did, and then it started all over again. And, uh, and those who were up in his apartment knew that he had a palm tree up there uh, with a sombrero hanging from it. I never asked where he got that or why it was there. I didn't want to know the answer. But... Um, that was Harry. He just loved that part. Um, it was so easy to push his buttons if you knew where they were. And uh, all you had to do was go up to him and say, Father Harry, I've decided that I'm going to um, sign my child up for soccer. They only play on Sundays, and, and that works best in my schedule. That's like putting a quarter in the machine and you wouldn't get a word in for the next 20 minutes because he's going to tell you all about what he thinks of that. And again, it's just, it was, he was so predictable and fun. Um, he was a man of great strength, a man who knew if, if he was in the right, he was going to stick with that. He started studying for the priesthood in Michigan for the Diocese of Grand Rapids. And after a time... The, um, at the seminary, the, um, uh, whoever it was, the rector, came to him and said, uh, we don't think you're a good fit here. And so instead of Father Harry saying, well, maybe I'm not called to the priesthood, he knew. He knew the Spirit was calling him to the priesthood. And so he took a trip over the lake. And what was Grand Rapids' mistake was our benefit 
because of his persistence, because his ability to listen to the Holy Spirit, because of his, his, his just tenacity, he was such a gift to the Diocese of Green Bay. He had an incredibly large heart, and I can't see in the back right now, but Donna, if you are there, your relationship with him was so special to him, and, uh, and he was so proud of family, but it was always fun because we knew of his great love for you, because again, if it wasn't talking about Mexico, he was talking about the next time you were coming. And we saw a completely different man when you came, Donna. He was this way 50 weeks of the year, and then Donna came, and all of a sudden he knew who the boss was. And, uh, and it's like, who is this guy for these two weeks? And why isn't he around more often? Um, but he had a great love. And, and besides Donna and, uh, and Larry, your friendship in Mexico and those, I mean, his greatest love was God. He loved God. He loved the church. He loved being a priest. Uh, his greatest joy, I think, was saying, you know, and you've all heard, you at Holy Rosary, probably at St. Bernadette, he's, he said, I just love presiding at the love feast of the Lord. That was his term, the love feast of the Lord. And for him to be able to do that was such a joy. He loved being part of this community. It was home to him. The last thing I'll say is... Every funeral, everyone, and I had a lot with him, every funeral when he spoke, he would use the quote from St. Irenaeus. The, the glory of God is a human being fully alive. I just think Harry embodied that so beautifully. He, the glory of God is, is when we accept who we are and we live it to the full. And Father Harry, in being priest, in loving church, in loving God and family in this community. He lived fully. And so I am grateful that I was a part of that. And Father Harry, my friend, may the Lord bless you and keep you. Our opening hymn is number 576, In the Day of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. peace be with you. And with your 
In the waters of baptism, Harry died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. In the waters of baptism, Harry died with Christ and rose with him to eternal glory. Now please place the Paul. In life, Father Harry cherished the gospel of Christ. May Christ now greet him with these words of eternal life. Come, blessed of my Father. In baptism, Harry received the sign of the cross. May he now share in Christ's victory over sin and death. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that the soul of Harry, your servant and your priest, whom you honored with sacred office while he lived in this world, may exalt forever in the glorious home of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces the reproach of, his, of the people he will remove from the earth, for the Lord has spoken. On that day, it will be said, Behold our God to whom we look to save us. This is the Lord for whom we've looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> 